Demetrius. Okay, so get, you see the vibe to vibe live.com. Everybody go on there, okay? And that's it, right? That's it. All right, I'll see, I'll see you there. This is a little behind the scenes. This, that is, you this is behind the scenes. Yes. yes. I mean, we're live already. I'm your girl, Tori, indeed. Also, well, not known, born Victoria Quiros. And I have the lovely and beautiful Lisette Martinez. Hi. <laughs> I'm you, sorry, I'm still like with my phone. It's right okay. There. That was a little behind the scenes, yeah. a little, um, it's reality. It's what we do before we go live. It's live. Before we do anything, we'd like to promote, obviously. Right. So um, I know you have more than a story to tell. And I know you have things in the works as well. And um, we're going to talk about everything. Okay, a little bit it. of everything. I know you're open book. I'm an open book. This is a surprise that we're in person with yes. each other because I was like, yeah, we could video you in, we could do that virtually or whatnot. But no, this this had to be in person. We connected. I think it's just like manifestation from the, yes, from the beginning. Yes. I definitely believe in manifestation, speaking into existence, and existence rather, and being aligned. Um, so I wanted to talk about a little bit your before. The My R. Life. Kelly time frame because, you know, I know there was some harsh feedback as well as positive, but um, when people, you know, they make smart comments or they're, they're just saying, oh, you know, a lot of these ladies, they told their story so they can make a quick buck, make money, be famous. And that's not the reality. And that's not what we want to focus on. So let's go back to your roots. Okay. okay, so before 17 year old mall shopping Lisette Martinez, <laughs> I want to know because I know you, you you're mall, vocalist. mall looking, <laughs> <laughs> window, window shopping, shopping. <laughs> yes, window, window shopping. shopping. Um, so bring me back to your roots because you're a vocalist, you love music. Yes, I am a vocalist. You know, my father was a musician, I come from a family of drummers. My mother oh, wow. was a dancer, an African dancer, Afro-Cuban dancer, as well as a singer. But, um, and then my second cousin is Sabu Martinez, who is a jazz giant who played wow. with Dizzy Gillespie and all those beautiful people. And so music was always a huge part of my life. And, you know, not to get too much into what, you know, because my parents aren't here. Not, you know, I say things and Sometimes people get angry with me because I say the truth and I don't mean to throw anyone in the bus, but it is my story to tell. So right, I say it. Right. So, you know, alcoholism was prevalent in my house and poverty was. And so I grew up as a child growing up in Borough Park, Brooklyn. I lived there till I was 13. And that's a predominantly uh, Jewish neighborhood. And we were like the only Puerto Rican family. So I didn't have a lot of friends. I was a, I was a loner. And I love the library. Every day after school, I would go to the library. I, I became an avid reader. You know, I love Judy Bloom, and those books saved me. Wow. You know, so, and then I discovered I could sing around 9 or 10. My mother had a huge record collection. And so, you know, if you're Latino, you know, Saturday nights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like the family, you know, any excuse to put on records and, and to play music. Play music and have some drinks and whatever the case was. But, you know, things would, you know, I grew up in a home where there was a lot of domestic violence. Yeah. And um, so I would lock myself in my room and just listen to records. And I listened to Linda Rossi and I listened to Bette Midler. I listened to the Motown sound. Like these women taught me how to sing. And um, that was just my salvation. And I right. felt like I need to do this to save my family because we had nothing. You know, like my mother made the best of it, but we didn't have, right. we didn't have anything. You know, we had a roof over our head. I'm not say anything, but we had the necessary things that we needed. But I grew up in a home seeing things that I really kind of molded me. Right. And, um, you know, sexual abuse didn't start with Roberts. It happened to me when I was six. It happened to me again when I was nine. It happened, you know, family wow. members. So I was going to bring that up because I know that is something relatable between you and Robert Kelly, right? Right. Robert Kelly. And, um, and it's something you two shared in common. Now, for you to even share that with me, that takes, again, you're like, it's like you're, I don't know, like, I don't know if you're going through it over and over and again, but I feel like you come to a point where you're telling your story and there's no tears, there's no sobbing, even if you're holding back on it, that's part of healing. I feel like, you know, it's kind of, it's cathartic for me to finally 
be able to talk about it. I held it in for so long. And you know, you grow up as a child holding things in and seeking love in all the wrong places. And so like when I met him, you know, when, a, when, there's a, when, when you're abused, abuse calls abuse. Wounded people call wounded people. That's just a fact. And so you like- You know who in the room is hurting. Who the room is hurting. <laughs> right. And you know, I kind of like dealt with things. Like I always, I was an empath. I know that word today. I know that term empath today. Yes. But I didn't understand why I was so forgiving as a kid and how I understood so many things that were happening around, I kind of like was empathetic to them. As right. I think back on and it empath, now, I, right. I was like, wow, you know, she must have had a really bad childhood and he must have had a really bad childhood because they can't be parents to me the way that I saw other kids, you know right, what I mean? Right. And I don't want to cry right now because you talked about that and I hold it back a lot, but... But if you need to, I'll cry with you. But I feel like even... I'm so even far a little bit, you know, it's like... I'm I'm working through it and I have a lot of help now to deal with these things. Right. For years I didn't. And you know, so going back to the em empath that I am and that I was as a child how, how I've been my whole entire yeah. life. I was yeah, empathetic. A gift. A gift it, it's a, a gift and a curse. <laughs> Cause you know, like with him, I met him or you know, this, we had this interaction and I always wonder why why me? I'm like a little kid, I have no body. You know what I mean? Like right. I'm like still why me? I'm still developing. Right. And he could have any woman, you know, I would think he would want a woman. You know, these are the kind of thoughts that were going on. But wounded people, like I said, call wounded people and I'm not making excuses for him. Right. But I feel like at that time he was he was still he was thirty years old nearly. Right. Twenty twenty eight years old, we're ten years apart. And I don't know if he was fully developed. And like I said, I'm not making excuses for him. I say what I mean and I mean what I say. Um, and I feel like we had that in common and that's really throughout, you know, in my book, you can read about our relationship and how I wanted to save him. Right. And I think that I've had that my entire life of save, wanting to save everyone. And it's really tough job to take on. It's a really right. hard, it's really hard to take on because you lose yourself. There's times that you could see someone within them. I mean, you know, you could look at somebody and see yourself within them. You know, like, oh, I, I see the little boy in him that's hurt. Right. My little girl and me can it's, relate. It's kind of and I want to help him because I'm already um, understanding that I'm a hurt. I have a hurt little girl. And right. I'm already healing from that or trying to heal from that. Maybe I can help him do the same thing. So when you met him, you were shopping in Miami. At this point, you were already living in Miami. I was at, here in Miami, in Miami. Miami Terror Mall. Right, and and you're shopping, you notice R. Kelly, you're with your best friend. My, at I, the time. Actually, I was with girlfriends, and we were waiting on my best friend, who's my best friend to this day. We've been friends. I wanted to ask you about that, because I know at one point yeah. she was trying to say, listen, get out. She's, uh, you know, they call me a pit bull. She's like 10 times that, but Ooh. um. She, <laughs> You know, we were window shopping is what you do in Miami. You go to high school. And as a teenager, as a teenager you, you go shop. to the mall. You want ice cream, you do what you do and you go, right? So, But I had already been to his concert because I was a singer in an R&B group. And my manager took us to his concert about a year and a half before I met him, met him. And um, so I already knew who, what he looked like. And he walked by and it was like another tall, this is the thing that they said in Lifetime, oh, he was a really tall guy. And I knew, nah, they cut everything out. What I said was he was walking with a really tall man, like seven foot tall, who big, you know, looked like a bot security and like a whole entourage. And so I was looking at him like with a bald head and whole, I'm like, I, know, I think that's R. Kelly. Like I was just a kid just saying like, oh my God, I think that's him. Right. I met him, saw him before. And then he heard me. And then he walked over and I was like, well, you know, like I was a little starstruck because we are when we're kids. I mean, you know, it right. happens. And I didn't, you know, it was normal. It was like normal, like, okay, so I'm making it, I'm, I'm recording an album here and I just said, oh, I'm a singer and I'm, you know, pursuing right. music as well. It was very innocent on my end. Right. I didn't know what the intentions were. Right. And then, you know, the bodyguard came back and handed me a phone number. I mean, I said goodbye to Robert and then that was it. And then they came back and gave me a number. 
And I, you know, at one point in my life, I had all these little, these little moment, you know, all that stuff. Right. And I got rid of it. And something told me don't get rid of it because one day you're gonna have to show. You know, like I felt like I like to sh like proof, proof, yeah, right? like proof, I proof. And I got rid of all that stuff and all the little notes and all these little things because I, at that point in my life, I was like, I want to get, I want to forget about this, right. right, right. And I don't mean to, deep, you know, go on a tangent. No, no. But no. um, you know, I wish I wouldn't have because you get questions a lot, like is she bullshitting? And it's like I don't like for what, right? You know, for what? Why would I? Why would I sit here and make up a story about someone or try to destroy their lives? Actually, right. destroyed mine or tried to. Right. So, going back to the comment you made where you were expressing, you know, the description of the bodyguard, you also mentioned that Lifetime cut out. So I'm, I'm gonna just say it. Lifetime cut a lot of things out, right? And they basically copy and pasted. They copy and paste. They like, cut out where. It would fit in and align within their documentary. Correct. So um, feel free. To and they're really to just just to say because I'm a film junkie and a film person that you know like I watch a lot of foreign film and I'm right. like I'm really like snobbish about that. It was a horrible <laughs> documentary. Sorry. Um, I don't feel like they told our stories properly. I watched the Jeffrey Epstein survivors and you know like they're giving a back you know backstory as to who these young girls were. And we didn't get that. It was like cut and paste. Uh, yeah, I met him at the mall. Like, you know, I had a life going on myself. Right. I had my own thing going on myself. And you probably should have allowed that to be heard for people to really understand what that story was about. Right. They cut my story so short, but it's okay because I'm writing a book. Right. Um, I have a co-writer and she's amazing. And I have a wonderful book agent. And, um, and his wife has written books. She wrote a book for Evelyn Lozada. And she's, written, oh, wow. she's written many books and she's been on top list. And, and I kind of just reached out to her and I was like, you know, I'm Lizette and I want to write a book, but I need help. And she was like, I, <laughs> I love how you said that. I'm Lizette and I, I want to write a book. I did, you know, I was like, <laughs> keeping her, like I'm just Lizette and I kind of have this little story going on and this. And I really want to help other young girls. And she was like, I know exactly who you are. And she was like, right on. She just wanted to help me. Right. So that's where we're at. So it's, it, it's in the process. But, you know, we're still living it. You know right. what I mean? Because you got to get the whole story. Right. You know, before, what's going on, what happened, and right. what's going on today. And we're still kind of living that with the new developments of his enablers right. being arrested. Wow. For harassing us, which they do on a constant basis. Wow. Yes. And um, I know during the premiere. Yeah. Um, for the first um, Surviving R. Kelly Part 1. Right. There was a premiere in New York City. And there was threats. Like, shoot, mm -hmm. like there was going to be a shooting. There was a gun threat a gun that threat. was called in. You know, we were very much, very emotional, all of us. Because it was the first time we were meeting each other. And some of us are overlapping, right? So it's kind of weird, you know, you don't go through the war stories, but you try to be there for each other. And it's difficult, there's a lot of emotions, it's high strung. We did a lot of media that day. And we're not used to that, we're not Hollywood women. We're right. like regular girls that You're go survivors. to our 95 jobs and we're right. survivors, right? So we just had, you know, we said, okay, we're going to go watch ourselves, which we really wanted to do because you don't want to watch your story with the rest of the world. Right. It's hard. You know, you like to be prepared. And so he killed that for us. And so we get to the screening and, you know, everything's cool. And then they start with his story. If you watched it, yeah, I'm sure you did. Right, right. And uh, they're telling his story and then it comes to, starts coming to Aliyah, and then me, and then it's cut off. Right. And we were terrified. So you, you were right after Aaliyah, mm -hmm. I feel. Yeah, I, I, was, feel like, I was right after Aaliyah. So I feel like they had an order and then they kind of went back and forth. Which was very confusing. Uh, yes, yeah, so I was trying to keep up with the timeline. I feel like she, she didn't come back from it. It was a very difficult thing to go through because I right. went through it too and I can only imagine what she went through. And so like my heart is just really breaks. But yes, I was right after Aaliyah. I met him in 95 of January, right after his birthday. And it was the first week of January, and they had just annulled that went that marriage. Wow! And so, yeah, her father was not 
No, they were not playing and you know, it shouldn't have happened, but it did and and he's going to be held accountable for that, I believe, this time, which is very important to all of us because right. it's her memory. And it just, like I said in part two, none of this should have happened. I mean, you know, I had a bright future, like we all did, and we were cut short. Who knows what we would have made it to right. had, that, had I not gone to that mall that day. And I want to say something, at the reckoning, you know, I look all disheveled and all that stuff but the, the truth of the matter is that, that lifetime put me on the blast for eight hours in a chair and you know they say that they had mental health professionals they didn't have any mental health professionals on set i was having a nervous breakdown on camera you know when when you ask someone if you ever would you if if you had not gone to that mall wow. that day would your life be different you don't ask that's like a really hard question to ask someone that's been in the seat like that's my whole life. Like my life changed from that moment, which is really, you know, and, and you know, I'm on a mission to hold Hollywood accountable for how they exploit, especially women of color and survivors. You know what I mean? Like people think we made money. We didn't make no money. What money? A thousand dollars? I got a thousand dollars. For love, both parts? Each part, a thousand dollars. It doesn't wow. matter. You know how much they made? And that's it, no royalties, no... I lost my job, I lost my house. I had to move for death threats, near break-ins, like people trying to go through the window. You know, BuzzFeed too, let's throw them in there. BuzzFeed did a whole story on me. That just, I didn't come out in Lifetime my first, my first coming out. My first coming out was May 8th, 2018 through BuzzFeed. And they did a whole spread on me and they showed my house and said where I worked said where my house was in Little Havana. I mean, these people put me in danger. And then everyone goes laughing their lives, oh my, you know, all the way to the bank. And we're just left with nothing, not even any aftercare, which to me is a major fucking problem. So how, was it addressed ever to them? Like, where are the mental health professionals? It was where addressed. And, and, and what was security, they say? security what was, was asked for. We could, can we have security a second round? Can we have online uh, monitoring where anything that's negative or any, any pages right. that pop up or right. threatening you, they kind of red flag it? Yes. It was like $150 a month, and I asked them for it, for everyone, not only for me, because I'm the type of person that when I talk to Lifetime and the production company, I'm not even speaking for myself, I'm speaking for, for as a collective, okay. all these survivors and the parents. And it was just like, no, you can't do that and sorry and you could call a number i don't need to call a number i need you to get me some help because when you open pandora's box you don't know what's going to happen you know especially when someone that that's that, that has dealt with depression their entire life right. this is like a whole nother ptsd right. situation and hollywood needs to be held accountable and that's my mission. I'm gonna take a bill. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm working with some lawyers right now. I don't wanna talk too much. Like we get we get pages that pop up, kill Lizette, kill Faith Rogers, kill Ezra right. Clary, kill all of us. It's um, you know, I just think that moving forward and I would love to be as a job because I can't find a real nine to five, but I'm working on other things that you know, I don't know if I could ever go back to a nine to five. I was always a corporate girl, you know, like right. I was a hotel girl that right. ran stuff in hotels and that's what I like to do because you know I like you know I like that but you have very you're a very good persona per thank right? you you have a, your warm. interpersonal yeah, yes, very you. warming and empathetic definitely for sure so but I could, I could see you you were so welcoming even here <laughs> thank we, you it was like thank we're you. friends hanging out and of that's course. the vibe and we I felt that even thank texting you. you I didn't even know who you were in the beginning right yeah. and then it's just now we 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 bonded. We bonded. <laughs> but so, like, I don't know if I could do 9 to 5, you know, because I don't think that I'm, you know, sometimes in, in your life there's a journey. And as much as you would love to go back to the simple way right. of things that things weren't really messed up and things were easy, we on a different, I'm on a different journey right now. So, you know, I propose to be a, a consultant for, for, you know, the production company and them to deal, how to deal with survivors and that was shut down real quick because i feel like they think they believe that i will be telling them listen don't 
deal with that and this, that, the other. Right. So I'm just going to do it on my own. I was going to say, just Vocally. still pursue it. Yeah. yeah. Just, no, you know, still pursue it. And so I'm pursuing it with company. my book and, 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 you know, because my book is a message and I want my book in every language ever possible. <laughs> you know, like, you know, they have, they say you have to manifest things by speaking them and that's part of the secret. And so like, it's a message of hope. It's a coming of age story. It's not all about him. It's a story of a girl that survived so many things. Right. And it's also a message that, you know, people need to be held accountable. Right. You know, just because you say you're the network for women, you know, saying one thing and what you do is two different things. That's and true. I'm not going to stand for it. No. Period. Yeah. You're going to speak out. Yes. Inspire, motivate, encourage. Everyone, yeah, right? you know, to, to, today is a difficult day for me because, you know, I love young girls that speak out and I love, you know, and I watched this documentary called Audrey and Daisy. I don't know if you watched it. And I was heartbroken today. I was heartbroken when I watched it and... and, and you watched it today? No, no, no. I oh. watched it a year ago when it came out. Oh, okay. Today when I found out that Daisy killed herself yes. last week. Yes. And I had been talking with her. Really? Yeah, I reached out to her when the documentary, you know, my documentary came out, we kind of like found each other, like how we found each other. Right. And I was so, I was so proud of her. I'm so proud of her still. And, you know, she started her little, you know, her little, but her nonprofit, she had her thing going on and she was speaking to young girls in high school and I want to keep that momentum in right. the memory of her right. and Audrey um, you know that's another mission of mine is that social media platforms need to be held accountable oh, yeah, the bullying I can't the cyber, the cyber bullying. bullying I mean these girls took their lives right with a whole life ahead of them how, how like what like it's 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 heartbreaking to me because she was like, I want a tattoo survivor on you. Like I had an interaction with this girl. Like she had right. dreams. Like she right. was getting, sorry, through it. And you know, you got to understand that when we come out and, and speak to the world, it's not easy. We deal with shit. We deal with shit inside internally. And you know, for me, like it was, it was when I posted that, I didn't even know. Cause I've been moved, you know, I moved and, and right, I had things right. going on you've been busy. and my friend said to me, you know, she killed us. And I said, what? And I was just devastated. Like, you know, so like, I'm, I'm going to talk to Cheryl Sandberg. She went to my high school, by the way, she went to North Miami Beach high school. Oh wow. CEO of Facebook. And, um, I would like her to get on board and other women that are powerful and holding these platforms accountable that whatever the, whoever's reading the, 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 you know, you when you post when you report the page. Right. I've had pages made of me that are such bullshit and such terrible things. Right. And they'll say, "Oh, we don't see anything wrong with it." So, like, who's monitoring? I mean, obviously, it's not a person. Right. So they need to really step up their monitoring and cut the shit because there are kids killing themselves. Right. No, you're absolutely right. And I know recently there was like an update on how to report if it's spam, if it's inappropriate, if it's imitating, if so now they have I've like all sub categories, right? So yeah. But who really like who really like lately I've been and it's very creepy actually. Uh, right? I've been getting super creepy. So many hundreds. I've been getting hundreds of of Instagram um like I don't even know. I don't even know how to say it. Basically it's a these all these Instagrams, you click the link, you sign up, and it displays a whole bunch of addresses of girls. What? And I said, is my address on there? Like I try to have everything as private as possible. Like when you when you buy a website domain, you know, you always pay that extra um, okay. fee to hide the registered owner information and and things like that. So I try to use PO boxes. I try to use um, the the extra fee to pay and cover it. and I'm like is my address on there and I've been stalked in person and I'm, I'm no celebrity I am a girl who's following her dreams yes. and living my dreams <laughs> right. and doing what I do and what I'm doing right now with you and I've had people in the mall I've had people hiding bushes wow. and it got bad 
It got that's really bad. Scary. And mind you, at that time, I, I didn't have, like, I, I had, like, quite a few followers, and it was just really bad. So you can relate. So, yeah, and I, I'm like, okay, and now recently it's been alarming to me. So I've been reporting every single one of those accounts that, and I never used to pay attention to who watches my story. I do. And then lately. People think it's vanity, but it's not. No. It's, I need to watch the creepies. Me, yeah. Something told me, like, my intuition was like, just, I don't know, I just started looking and yeah. paying attention who's watching. Who's watching you. Who's watching. Because I have that gut feeling that something's going to happen. And I, I, I have too. a thing where I feel like my dreams have meanings behind it. I'm very, in, like... You're intuitive. Yeah, I'm very intuitive. I'm very, like... Uh, with, I feel I'm you. with it. I'm with it. Yes. And, You're connected. Um, correct. And something told me, just look. So I started looking. I'm like, what is this? And it looked like regular day-to-day -day people, you know? Beautiful people. Regular teenagers. Yeah. Regular whatever. And, you know, the youth looks up to me a lot. And majority of my following are mostly men, you know what I mean? I try to empower women and bring us together and everything. But when I started clicking these profiles, it was just like, you know, it, there were private accounts. Um, but it said, click here to find the addresses of local um, Instagrammers, uh, ladies on the web, what? influencers. I, I think I have a few screenshots. After this, I will show you. And so I stopped reporting every single one. Oh my goodness, that's Every terrible. Every single one. And then, you know, there's a lot of spam and a lot of um, companies that try to reach out to you. Oh, we could we could build your following up. Or we could yes. post your likes. So they, I for that. free, for free we that. posted your last 10 posts. Why would you do that? Like, So I thought it was that. Yeah. So I stopped using hashtags. Oh. And that's the reason why I stopped using hashtags. So I said, maybe it's because I'm using hashtag live, hashtag interview hashtag whatever and i said you know what i'm just gonna it's the, and it has the capability of using like 30. right so i narrowed it down to using none or maybe three four or five that's it and i thought that's what was attracting those things to me and i still get them girl so i'm sorry yes, you're going through I, that I'm but yes you. we go through that like and so, so and what i do me yes. it's like 10 times for you yes and and people like they I think can't. they're like exagera no should be going down. <laughs> no. And I was in no documentary. Like some weird so stuff. Imagine, just imagine like you. Yeah. The other women. I mean, we get, you know, it's wow, like we're, 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 we're nervous to go to the trial. The trials, let's put it, because it's three of them. Um, we don't know if there's going to be someone in the bush. I mean, we, we're getting threats, like live threats. And so... You know the non-believers and they call us liars people were arrested this week because of the shit that they do to us but and we, we well, i reported to the fed i don't have time for not I, I, I call the feds okay this is what happened today because you have to take these threats you can't take them lightly no. you know what i mean you can't take them lightly this is a serious 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 situation going on and you know they they blame us but you have to blame him it's his behavior it's his it's right. his patterns but, for 25 you know, years it's just like they mentioned it, it, you know he wasn't alone no I mean, these are the enablers yes it was why the did the bodyguard give me a number correct, correct. When, I, when he knew i was a young kid i mean when i was 17 i looked 12. right i had no body i had right. nothing and yeah, back in the day, kid. I, I always crack up at these memes <laughs> when I was 12 and then 12 year olds today. Exactly. And I'm like, oh my God. They're real healthy. I had, first of all, my mom didn't even let me. <laughs> I couldn't even wear makeup. My unibrow. Yeah, right? so, exactly. <laughs> I know. Big waxing girl. my unibrow was like, oh no, you're not. You're not going to touch I was like, unibrow. wait, I still had a unibrow. Like, what do you mean? You know, 14 I mean, year old. Maybe you can put up the picture of me. <laughs> I looked literally like a but 12 you, year old. I had a braid on one side. You like, know what? But it was like you were in style. But I was, yeah, you I used to wear Calvin Klein, you were the other thing. And the, but you, were, you were hip, but still. I was hip, but still. The I baby shopped at thrift shops. You know, I was always like that. I love, girl I that, love thrift shops, flea markets. I, was always, I love them. Yeah. You know, you asked who I was. I was a girl that would go to thrift shops with my mom on Saturdays and get my little outfits and. You know, I was like a kid. You know what I mean? I was a kid. I was not 
a girl, a fast, I hate that term, fast girl. Right. I feel like it needs to be eradicated from our culture completely. Um, but yeah, I wasn't like looking for someone to save, you know, it right. wasn't that. So I went, my friend was working, my best friend. We got, I got this, the number. I didn't know what to do with it. I was like, I'm not going to call him. Blah, right. blah, blah. But I was a vocalist and I was a very good one. And so I really wanted to make it. And I felt that I could. And at this time, I was singing with Tito Puente Jr. Oh, wow. And so he's, you know, he's still my friend. And so, like, we were doing things. But, you know, things kind of just changed. And I wanted to really pursue my singing. And my best friend knew that. And so when she got out of work, she, I told her what happened. And she was like, well, maybe you should call him because he helped Aliyah. He helps all the artists. And you know, because my friends really believed in me. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, oh, let's go get a bag. Like we wouldn't think like that. Right. We right. were not those type of kids. You were you were trying to follow a dream. I was just following my passion and my dream. Right. Like you're following your dream. Right. You know, like it's like nothing could come in front of that. And so that day we went to the, her house because I lived at, at this point. I left my house because things were just left, and I wanted peace and quiet. And my best friend took me in and her mother and so we went to the house and she said okay well you know what let's just call i'm gonna go with you and she was like she's like mama bear till this day and so i said okay so i felt comfortable with her going with me so we did our hair you know you get a little did it all up or whatever and then we rolled we went to sports authority here in aventura and it was like him there with 20 other people so you didn't feel like it was a danger right you know what i mean and then it was alia's uncle Right. was there so i didn't believe that he married her because why would an uncle that mar he married her? <laughs> right, his niece right, right. at the age of 14 15 years old be still rolling with him right so when that question came up when we went to dinner he we went to the outback steakhouse that question came up because my best friend asked because she don't have she don't have no hair on her tongue <laughs> i wanted to go like this under the table and just disappear right because i was really shy you know, I felt like, oh my God, that's over. You know, like I was raised to just shut up, right? Uh -huh. So she wasn't. She, you know, she, she, she ran very the house. She's very outspoken. <laughs> and so he said, don't believe everything you hear. And it was total silence at the table. And then it went to be singing. And then we ended up at the studio. And then, you know, there was a tongue down my throat. And then I didn't know what to do. And then we just, I wanted to go home. And the rest of the story is in the book. But... It wasn't that we were at a party hanging out. It wasn't any of those things. Right. That, exactly. We all have different stories. Right. But right, he right. sought us out. Right. It wasn't us going like, oh my God, we're going to go meet so and so. Because he heard you say, I think that's our Kelly. Kelly. And he was the one who came up. I was just being like a little bit of a fan. I mean, I didn't, you know, I, I was a little kid. Like, so, so you were you would have been fine with just that conversation. I was perfectly you met fine. Him, you moved on. I was walking to the next door to window shop, <laughs> just waiting on my best friend to get off work. She worked at Mary around and we were just waiting on her to get off to give her a ride home, and right. that's it. That, that was our date. You know, that was our, our our purpose for going to the mall that day and being right. there. Right. And so that's basically it. And then the relationship. It wasn't a relationship, but it, it was a kind of like a working thing and then it turned into whatever it turned into um which is not good it was very abusive it was very strange it you, was you almost died i almost died at the end of it um ended up in the hospital i ended up in the right? icu with some weird chick called guillamare and it was like from mono and i had just seen him at the concert and you know it was like a whole situation that happened and I explained it more in my book. You know, it's like, I'm kind of happy that Lifetime did what they did because they didn't, I, I want to tell my story. The right, right, right. And so there's a lot in there that I think people will appreciate and understand me and really get to know me and appreciate that I'm so open, you know, and I want to be transparent. I'm a very transparent person. Sometimes it's too, it's bad. Like in relationships, we're not going to go there. <laughs> um... You say too much. Yeah, I'm a little bit. Uh, <sighs> not a little bit. I'm a lot blunt. <laughs> I'm a lot blunt. You know? We should start that hashtag. Right? I'm a lot I'm blunt. I'm a lot blunt. And it's just like, oh, 
was I not supposed to say that? I'm very yeah. open. Yeah, and you know what I'm I say? Very, I'm like, I'm like I'll say you something. You can always ask me something, and I'll be honest. Honest. <laughs> and I'll be real with it. And, and yes. I'm not ashamed of who I am or what I've been through myself. Yeah. So, like, I could definitely relate to you when you say, like, uh, let's not go there. No, yeah. because it's like, then I'll I'm just, a lot and then I'll <laughs> say something, and then I'm just like, don't respond because I don't want to hear the response because I'm just like, did I, am I too extra? Oh my did God. I just say that? <laughs> I guess at the age of 43, I still have not had that type of relationship that I'm looking for that they understand me. Right. Because I'm really misunderstood. Right. So, I don't know if it's the bluntness, but going back to that, it could be that. It's just like too extra. A lot of people can't handle they the can't truth. They can't handle the truth. They cannot. And then I've learned to be blunt without being disrespectful. Not that I'm a disrespectful person, but you learn to, you know, understand some people are more sensitive. Some people could take things the wrong way. Oh, they just don't communicate so like I'm you. just like, <laughs> um, so I'm, I always give somebody a dis disclosure. Actually, I didn't even have to give you the disclosure because I felt like... I get it. Yeah, we're like... Very similar. Yeah, so usually when I meet people, I tell them, like, listen, this is my disclosure. I'm very blonde, I'm very outgoing. Um, I won't embarrass you, yeah. but um, yeah, it is what it is. I'm going to tell you what it is. I don't know. Maybe I get it from my mother. She's very, it is what it is. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm right. 43 years old. I don't have time for games. You know? <laughs> I don't have time to be like, Oh man, I should have said that or go home and regret what I said. Like I just like I'm to the point where it's what it is and if you can handle it, you can. And I'm right. very I'm very compassionate like I'm a compassionate person. And I worry about people's feelings. Right. But I also feel that you need to be direct right. and honest. And I think that that comes with telling my story too. That I feel like I don't have to silence myself. I don't have to have a filter of like, oh, I'm gonna hide this or hide that. Nah, this is what it is. Right. Period. <laughs> wow. So I'm, I'm, I don't even want to really talk about Robert. No, no, no. Not. I mean, we don't have lifetime, but lifetime because um, I feel like you are really putting everything into your book, and obviously you're gonna be detailed about it, and it's gonna Very. be a timeline, and it's gonna be your story. There's no back and forth copy and pasting no. or whatever terminology or yeah. you want to say editing editing right i mean they make so, it a little bit of, you know but it's not it's just very organic for me right and telling what happened to me like i said it it's like um i don't know if you ever read this book are you there goddess me margaret by judy oh, no. Bloom. no no I was it's a masterpiece it. it's a kit it's a story for every teenage girl and like this book is like kind of like that but it's a little darker you know, she goes through a lot of things and, and I go through a lot of things and I don't want to hold back. Like I, you know, I came out to help others. Like that's just what it is, you right. know? And after, you know, not, not to go on a tangent, but after, you know, the situation with Robert, I met someone else who was very abusive toward me. I mean, extremely abusive toward me. And I, you know, I had kids by, I don't, I don't regret my children, I have twins. But I regret the person that I had them with right. because he kind of like, you know, you, you. Your kids okay. suffer for it, right? You know, for those decisions that I made, and, and for a long time I I really beat myself up for it. But I'm better for it today. My kids are very strong, and you know we have our ups and downs, but. That situation when I was 17 to 20, 21, set the tone for who else I was gonna be with. Right. Because in these, in these situations, it becomes a pattern of who you choose to have in your life. And if it's sick from the beginning. <laughs> so that's something that becomes a comfort zone or it's something that you may be used to it. Is like, I, I don't wanna describe any, I don't wanna describe it incorrectly. Like it's I've had toxic people in my life very and toxic. I'm always attracted to people that have that toxic trait because right. I'm always thinking, oh, I already, you know, I've been through it. I can help him. It's or like her learned behavior. Whoever. It's like right. you want to save the wounded person. Right. Going back to what I said from the beginning, being very wounded people call wounded well. people. Right. Like you attract that. And so, you know, I like to say I'm a thriver. I'm a survivor, but I don't, I don't I want to move I love, away. 
I love that you use Thriver. Yeah, I don't, I'm a survivor. I've survived many things in my life. But now I want to attract Thrivers. You know, and I want to be that for the young girl who's sitting at home. I get a lot of messages, which keep me going. Honestly, right. I've, I have my bad days. We all do. Oh, yeah. And um, I get these messages from young girls, older women, men. You know, I left a relationship because you inspired me to leave. Oh, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a, um, a homeless shelter. You know, which breaks my heart. But I'm happy that they're there instead of being in there. Rather be in. There's safe you know, houses. There's, there's just, yeah, I'm working. Yeah, there. Well, hey. yeah. The, well the, you spilled the safe there's, homes. There's safe homes, but, and there's there's resources. And I mean, there should be more resources. I know a lot of communities lack. You know. Um, depending where you are geographically, right? It depends where what community you're with. But there's always, like, I I rather hear that you know what, you're you out of the le situation. You left your apartment. You went to a shelter. Those are just things. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, when I left, when I left the first one, I left sick, almost dead, with nothing. A thousand dollar check. How ironic is that, right? That I that I. Well, you know what? That Lifetime gave me a thousand dollars when they saw the check. From that he sent to my parents for a thousand dollars when I was almost dead. It's fine. I, w I didn't care about money and I still don't care about yeah. it today. But it was just ironic how they would do the same thing to me again. But when I'm, I don't, I don't want to sound like a crybaby or I'm just saying no, that you can there's certain yourself. things that are just wrong. Um, and what's right is right. What's right is right as well. What's wrong is wrong. And you know, when I left the second situation, I left a home. I wasn't a really a wealthy situation as well you know like you know I didn't have really need anything um, and I had these little my children with me you know I left everything the house the car my luxury everything I left and I just took my kids and I was like I can't my daughter cannot see a weak woman no and my son cannot see someone mistreating you know think that that's okay and that was the re main reason why I left again because it was like I couldn't look at myself in the mirror, and I love myself. Today I can say that I love myself, and it's a it's a day to day thing. Back then I didn't know, you know, you, people just stripped me of who I was, and I gave up on so many things. But I never gave up on believing in myself, and I never and I never gave up in knowing that I come from strong women, a lineage of strong women, and that shit ain't gonna happen. Nope. And I never lived with another man. I've never lived with another man to this day. I've never been married. I just dedicated myself to my kids. And you know, the point of this is that women can, we don't need anyone. Without a, without that's a fact. <laughs> we don't need it. Like we make the world keep going. Like that's just it. Like we bring life to this. I don't know any man that can do that. You know what I mean? And, and we're stronger than we give ourselves credit for. And today, I am happy with myself. I believe in myself. And I believe in women out there. And I just want to help. I just want them to know that they're not alone. That this is not a situation where you're not going to make it. Right, right. Those are just things. Like I said, I left everything. I didn't give a shit. That's all materialistic. Exactly. Replaceable, rebuildable. But I you're mean, not, you, your soul, you, who you are, is number one. Right. You know? Right. Even if it's broken momentarily, temporarily, you can still rebuild yourself. Right. I believe in that. Mm -hmm. I do. Whether you've been through mental abuse, physical, physical abuse, emotional. Emotional. Emotional for me was the worst. And I've been through all those abuses, but emotional really tears you down. Right. No, absolutely. It's dangerous. Really, 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 really harsh. Wow. Mm -hmm. So is there anything you would, um, you know, advise a young girl or woman, uh, even a, a young boy or a man, what, what would you advise someone today being through everything you've been through? What would be that one thing you would just tell somebody? Never give up on yourself. You know, you got to look in the mirror and love yourself. And I'm not talking about fit. I'm saying like dig deep, deep inside and say to yourself, am I doing the right thing? Am I around people that love me? Anyone that loves you doesn't want to hurt you. Right. Doesn't want to tear you down. 
doesn't want to make you feel less than. That's not love, and you have to love you first. And that's not easy. When we, you know, we come. I'm, I'm a, I'm a Puerto Rican woman, and we come from these homes where, you know, we were just, you know, our grandparents were brought over to this country, and you know, our parents grew up a certain way, and it wasn't easy. And so there's a lot of issues. I, I come across it. I lived it. I know. However, we're very strong. Excuse me, and. Believe in yourself. Nobody has to tell you I believe in you. Believe in no. you. Yeah. Believe in yourself. And when, you know, when you see those red flags, it's, uh, there are red flags. <laughs> there are I, wish, I wish someone would have said to there me. There are some warnings that you could. The <laughs> run. First, the first run. One. Run. Run the other way. Run. 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 Right. But um, yeah, you know, just believe in yourself. Love yourself. And um, never give up. And never give up. Never give up. I believe in that. I never I, give up. I stand with you. With I have that. been through some situations, homeless with two kids, no place to live, no money, uh, sleeping on the floor. You you name it, I've been through it. And I crawled my way into corporate life, and I made a life for my kids. My kids never, they never knew really hard time when they started to get older. Things. Um, you know, when they were younger, things were harsh, but they don't, thankfully they don't really remember that. Right. But I made a switch around and I never, you know what I said? I said, I'm going to love me and my kids. Wow. And the right person will come across when they come across. Right. But today and for the next, for however long it takes, um, they're number one and I'm number one. Because if you are not whole, you can't help anyone else. Right. Right. <laughs> I believe in that. You know what? Like, you know, you can't be putting 90% there out to other people no. right then another eight percent here to random people whatever and then leave two percent for yourself no. like you have to be good in order to do great and help people you know you have to build your own foundation of course you know and, and you people, know people go through so many different things and they try to put everyone first and then when when they run out of health when they run out of things from their, their energy, men, the mentality, the mental health. It's just like now you're ripped apart and they're expecting you to keep holding them up, right? Right. Or enabling them or whatever it is in that situation to continue. Right. And so like for me, back then when I left with the kids and went to do my, try to figure things out and just go on survivor mode, I never got mental health. Help. I never dealt with any of these things until the documentary and it's forced me to get help because we need help when you're carrying on with all this stuff there's nothing to be ashamed of there's nothing wrong with that it's it's turned my life around like literally when i was in that documentary and i was doing all that media i was torn apart inside i mean people could see it i would like go off and and like really angry with things and and not know how to express myself. And today I'm totally calm, collected. I'm like, you know, I gotta focus on the mission. And that that came with mental health, you know, that help. That came with speaking to a therapist every week. There is nothing wrong with that. We have this stigma, especially Latinos and African Americans, that you don't get help. You know, women are like, be strong and keep it moving. Right. And you know, it's only so, my mother, I get that from my mom too to this day because they're built that way. Well, you know what? I went through this and I went through that and it's just like, you know what? I just need someone to listen to me. And so I went to go get someone impartial, not in my family, not in my, none of my friends to help me to deal with that and say that it's okay not every day to be strong and not every day to feel like you're going to save the world and da 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 da. You know, like... It's okay. You can be vulnerable. Vulnerability does not equate weakness. It's actually a strength. <laughs> you got really deep. Thank you. And it just reminds me of how even before we um, went live or um, actually said things on record, we were talking behind the scenes, right? And you mentioned, we both mentioned the inner child in us, right? The inner child in other people that are hurt and that need healing and, and all that. Right. So is that something that you've already, by going to therapy 
and talking to someone who's unbiased, not related to you, no relationship, has that helped that inner child, that inner girl in you? Yes, it has, because like you saw in the documentary, I broke down the second part, the reckoning, right, and yes. I said, I will always love Robert, and then I said, uh, the little kid in him, because there's a broken little girl in me. Right. Yes, there's still that little girl, she's still there, but she's healing, and you know, it's not my fault what happened to me, and that takes so much for me to say out loud, because for so long, I just blame myself, and I made excuses for everyone that hurt me. And you know, it's not okay. It's not okay. I used to say, it's okay. It's okay, you know, it's okay, mom. It's okay, this one, it's okay, that one, it's okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay. And to be able to, to see someone that really derailed your life, be held accountable, it's like the biggest strength given to me and the biggest blessing from the universe and from God and whatever we believe in to say, you know what, it's not okay and we're holding people accountable. And that's huge for me because I really, I'm 43 years old, that happened to me when I was 17, then I had the kids and then like I just went into survivor mode and to be able to sit here and feel empowered, it's just like it had to happen. That's just the way it had to happen. And so I really hope that people understand me a little bit more now. I hope that they buy the book. I hope that they, you know, uh, follow things that I'm doing because it's all from the heart. Right. It's not about being famous. It's not about anything like that. I want to be famous for helping others. And it's not even about fame. It's just like I want to be known when no, I die I say. to say, Lizette went through so much in her life, but she gave to others. And that's really what it's all about. Right. Do you want to take a break? No, I'm good. Right. Okay. Um, thank you. No, I, I believe that you will and you already are making a difference. And you're already getting messages on social media a lot. about, you know what, you've helped me. I left so-and-so or I left a toxic, abusive relationship. And um, you're already doing it. But now you're going to do it in your way, the right way, correctly, and what your story really is. Because I know off the scene... We were talking about, you know, just right now you mentioned how you stated, oh, I will always love him, the inner girl in me, the inner girl in him. The little boy but, in him. And the little boy, did I say the girl? Oh, yeah. The little boy. <laughs> That's okay. The little boy in him. And, you know, there was parts cut out from that because there was a story that led up to that. There was a story that led up to that explanation and, and they chose to do what they do. And I caught some flack for it and how could you say that? But then... You know, like the women like me who, who have been abused and who lived through those things, you know what they said to me? Wow, I get you. I do. Like, I right. get it. You know what I mean? Like, thank you for being so raw and honest. And that helped me get through it because I felt so fucked up. Excuse my language no, about it's it. it's okay. It's okay. And I was like, what the hell? Like, how could they do that to me? But I said what I said. And, if you and know, I get, they get the know. sound bites. They get the sound bites and they do what they do, and it's all good because yes, as a little girl that's that was that was broken inside, I did love him. I will always care about little kids who are broken inside, right? You know, because there's a reason why adults um, do what they do. It's not an excuse. I'm not excusing him because I was abused as a kid before him, and I chose not to do those things. And so was his brother, Carrie. And so was Bruce. And so was so many other people. And so, you know, it, 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 it's okay. I said what I said, but right. there was a reason behind it. It's not like, uh, I want to be with Robert. It's like, no, it's not. It's nothing like that. It's just understanding as I'm growing an abused person. Right. And that takes huge courage to say I feel so. I'm gonna give myself props. Oh yeah, that's so courageous. period. Yeah, very very courageous. And um, like you mentioned, the, the ladies that get you that been in abusive relationships or whatnot, they they understood. I understood. You know, I was like, I get her. Like I totally understand what she means by that. And then like somebody who hasn't been through a rough, toxic or abusive relationship, whatever you want to categorize it as. They're like, oh, look at her. How can she love? You know, they, they don't get it. They'll get it. 
Maybe later. They'll, they'll, they'll get it. They don't get it in a way. I guess we don't get them. We don't get No, I get them because they've never really been through those right, things. Right. So they don't have an understanding, but you do. Right. And Fulana de Tal does. And right. she went through her situation. Right. So she will always love that person too because sometimes you stay with those, those feelings because that was the person that really hurt you. Right. And you're like, it's so right. complicated to even explain. I'm not even going to even try. But the people that get me, get me. The people that don't get me, it's okay. I still you'll, love you'll you. You'll get it. You'll get <laughs> it one day. We were a little bit everywhere. You a little know? bit. Because I go, I go everywhere. Not even you or myself. It's just that the vibe here is, is real. Hashtag the vibe is real, right? <laughs> That's the slogan of I love it. vibe. Ooh, yes. I just plugged myself in. But tap in. <laughs> tap in myself. Tap in. 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 But we're having, it's like a girl's night in. Yeah, you I'm know, gonna take my shoes out. off. I, my shoes are already off. I'm taking my shoes off. <laughs> They're like, oh. yeah, my feet hurt. Okay, I, go I ahead. took off my shoes at the door. That's how comfortable. Yes, that's how it is. And in you work barefoot too, right? Yeah. We're so like, this don't is how show it is the feet in this today. house. Don't show the feet, but we got pedicures, so we're good. <laughs> yes. Um. So it's just like we're ha we're hanging out, we're having a girls' night, and we're going a little bit back. Is that you're not nine to five anymore? You gotta find something else. Right. Which you are yes. working on. You're working on a nonprofit. Yes. Um, is it okay to yes. discuss it? Yes. I know this is something that you were kind of keeping it's on. It's near and dear to right. my heart. Right. And it's House first, of Delia. Yes. House La of Casita Delia. de Delia. And Delia is my grandmother. Um, she passed away, but she was a street social worker and she spoke five languages. Wow. And she was a bad mama jama and she like... She was part of the Puerto Rican Nationalist Party, so she used to have meetings with like Pedro Viso Campos people and all those all those soldiers and you know she 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 was like the most stable part of my life as a kid in the fact that you know she would pick me up every weekend from my mom's house in Brooklyn and she would take me she's like okay we have diligencias we have appointments and I'm like what are you talking about grandma she she made a hustle like a job for herself that she would help immigrants because she spoke so many languages right. fill out their paperwork and wow. go and go to social. I mean, in social security office in, in Lower Manhattan, they have her picture on the wall. Oh, wow. like yeah, she was amazing, right? And she loved me to death. We have the same hands, but um, and I love my grandmother so much. So House of Delia is in tribute to her because she never was lucky in love. She went through a lot in her life, and she had these kids, and she raised them, and kind of right. like the same similar story as I did, and. She gave up on men, she gave up on that story, and she just said, I'm gonna dedicate my life to others, and women and immigrants, and that's what she did. And so I feel like my nonprofit should be named after her. That is so beautiful. And, <laughs> you know, so it's very, it's very, it's really, um, it's just something that I love and I wanna make happen. And, you know, I want these safe homes for women because you know it's a lot of times where you don't know where to go and you don't want to go to an institution you don't right. want to go to a cold a homeless shelter with your right. children not saying there's anything wrong with that but i want people to feel like i'm in the situation i want to go to house i want to go to delia's house right. you know and then meet me and then you know because right. even you know so, getting law enforcement if they call and say i want to leave the situation and I'm tapping in with law enforcement to get them out of it. Right. That's really what I want to do. I want right. to just feed these women to feel like they're going to come here to this house and they're going to leave empowered and they're going right. to leave with the tools that they need to make it independently in society. Right. And how would you compare, um, for those who don't know, like a shelter versus a safe home, a safe house. A safe home for me, what I visualize it is, it's a home. Like it's gonna be like a real house. It's gonna feel like you're at home. Like you're at home, warm, meals, mental health, you know, professionals that will come. If you need to get your GED, we're gonna help you with that. If you right. need to learn interviewing skills, we're gonna help you with that. We're gonna give you the tools. It's not just you come and sleep at night because you have nowhere to go. It's more of like a mentorship, and um, and for the kids too, and guidance, because the and guidance. Support. Because when I left with my children, that you know, the second situation, we didn't have that. You know, I was like couch surfing with my kids, and I wished it was a place like that. You know, but it's okay. But I envisioned something like that. I envision. I feel like it's necessary and it's needed. Right. Right. 
Well, I want to be there for the grand, the super grand, grand opening, opening. right? <laughs> I do too. Um, I can definitely envision that and picture it, and I know you're you're manifesting it actively, and I just wish you the best on that. And of course, like we're gonna keep in touch. Of course, I'm gonna keep updating. And you helped me with things, and I really appreciate you. And oh, I you, think do, you're you don't even have to mention that. You're an amazing, amazing spirit. Yeah, she has. Thank you. She's like she's a. Uh, She's very talented. Oh, thank you. Very intelligent, really thank intelligent you. woman. And um, I'm very proud of you as well. Thank you. That as a Latina, a you're yes. doing it yes. and you believe in yourself. And her man behind the scenes is supporting her. That's the engineer, okay? The engineer <laughs> supporting her, and I love him. And, um, you know, so thank you for having me. Thank and you. thank you for coming here. Well, I can't wait for us to cut the ribbon. And I'm gonna the be house. there. Yeah, you are. So, of course. Whatever date it is, I I'm already so have it in my excited. calendar. Like I'm so excited. I'm stoked. gonna definitely be there. Um, thank you for sharing your story. Thank, thank you, you for, for having opening me. up to me. For not only myself, but anybody, any victim of any age, any, any thriver. gender, a, a thriver. That is the highlight. Even on the flyer that We're was going created. With the thriver. Thriver. I love the flyer, by the way. I was like, thriver. Yes. That's it. Yeah. We survived, and now we're thriving. Yeah. <laughs> Ciao. Bye. Oh, <laughs> oh, that was my sweet. God.